Hello, I'm Wendy. Today I'm doing some quick sketches of coastal flowers. I'm using watercolour and charcoal pencil. At the beginning of May, I spent a few days on Skomer Island, which is an island off the coast of Pembrokeshire in West Wales. It's a national nature reserve and site of special scientific interest. I've put a link in the description box below if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the, the island itself. I did some quick watercolour sketching when I was out there on the island and um, if you'd like to see those I'll put a link in the description box to my website and blog and there you can find a little bit more information as well about the island. Although I didn't get the opportunity to do any um, paintings of these I was particularly drawn to these lovely flowers, the sea campion that was in full bloom and it was growing along the coastline, along the rocky coastline and on top of lots of the stone walls on the island. I did do a few pencil sketches on site and got used to the structure of the flowers and when I came back I looked at my photographs and really liked some of them and did some quick sketches, quick watercolour sketches using these images that I'd taken. I worked on heavy cartridge paper about A3 size and it was mixed media using charcoal pencil, watercolours and white gouache. I might have used salt sparingly on one or two of the sketches. I think using these materials I'm able to work really quickly and intuitively and explore different techniques and mark making. When I'm doing this sort of work it's not about trying to produce exactly what's in front of me but just to enjoy being creative with pencil and watercolour and expressing something about what the subject says to me. For the demonstration painting, I worked in very much the same way as the sketches that I've just shown you, but I did use watercolour paper this time, um, quite a large sheet, and I worked with charcoal pencil. You can see here with the speeded up version of the drawing, I did work quickly and I was using some of my photographs there as a reference. I like the charcoal pencil and um, I don't know, I just feel I can work quite confidently and quickly with it and later on you'll see that some of the pencil lines that I'm putting on here I've actually reinforced. I don't mind the charcoal pencil sort of washing into, dissolving into the watercolour I think that can give you quite a nice effect. It sort of knocks back the watercolour. No masking out for this painting, some of you will be pleased to hear. So if you want to try this approach, what you're going to have to do is just paint around where the flowers are going to be because as you know with watercolour um, you can't paint light over dark so you have to paint around them and I'm not being terribly careful, you don't need to be very careful because this is a very loose, sketchy sort of painting that we're doing. You will see as I'm painting this though, I do make it a little bit darker towards the base of the flowers deliberately so that that will be more the centre of interest. And the colours I'm using here is um, a blue, cobalt blue or ultramarine with a little bit of Payne's grey so that I'm varying the colour. I'm keeping everything fairly soft edged but I'm not too worried about some of the um, harder edges appearing or drying. I did a little bit of an underpainting with a light green. 
I wanted to try and keep some of that green. I'm not sure how successful I was, but I wanted to keep some of that light green in there. So I put that little underpainting wash on using some sap green. And then I put um, a sort of a neutral gray color beneath it um, to stand for the color of um, some of the rocks that were there in the wall. I didn't want the flowers to be too pink, too sort of chocolate boxy pink, and they weren't. And um, after a bit of um, experimenting with the colours, I decided to go with um, crimson alizarin, and I varied that in places with a little bit of cobalt blue. I did put a few random bits of pink here and there and for the centre of the flowers I added a touch of cadmium orange. I'm not sure exactly what the colours were, they did vary a lot in the flowers but I did sense that there was some warm orangey colours going on in there. The stems were a reddy green so I, I put a little bit of sap green in with the um, crimson alizarin to um, to paint the stems here using a rigger brush
The next stage was um, putting in some of the, um, the leaves in there. There were tiny little leaves on the stems and then these more concentrated areas, if you like, of, of green beneath them um, and on top of the rocks. I'm going to just play a bit of music while I'm painting this because there's not an awful lot to talk about. You can see what I'm doing. I'm not being too particular. I'm dotting around um, with the different colours. I'm trying to vary the colours and vary the tones in the greenery. I get a little bit busy with these marks, I think, as I've said before, um, but it's just my style. I'm trying to get some areas that are not quite as busy, but um, it's difficult, isn't it, when you get into a way of working to change. I, as you can see, I am varying the tones and I'm making some darker greens around where the white flowers are so that they're going to stand out. The colour palette is generally um, cobalt blue with some yellow and if I want the darker greens then I can put some Prussian in there with a bit of burnt sienna. As you can see I did do a little bit of splattering with paint and sometimes just with a bit of clear water just to vary the edges and the shapes and add a little bit of variety. I brought some of that green down um, quite randomly um, to separate or suggest that there were rocks there and the, the, the marks now are just um, separating some of those areas that I put on before and softening some of the edges in places as well just to give the impression that there were some rocks underneath there. I did strengthen in places, wet into wet. I did a little bit of splattering and I also added a um, little bit of blue, maybe to suggest some shadow on the rocks. At this stage the, um, the painting, or the sketch if you want to call it that, was really finished. I did a little bit of reinforcing with the pencil, because I do like the pencil marks with the watercolour, but I really, really didn't want to overdo it, and there comes a stage when you want to stop, and you should stop. So I almost did. I just did a tiny little bit more of reinforcing, and I think I popped on a few more darks, of, um, of, with the green. I think really I could have put a few more dark still in those flowers. It's looking a little bit mid-tone to me, um, but there we are. Um, you, there's always something you can do on a painting and uh, that's the beauty of it. You, you learn with everything that you do. I think a little bit more um, of the dark green in there would not have come amiss. 
As you can see also, I did reinforce the colour on them because I think when you're near the end of a painting, you've got to stand back and you've got to um, then judge it, the tones and everything, and then just make some minor adjustments um, without doing too much on there. I used just a touch of white gouache just to change the shape of one or two of the flowers, which I didn't like. I'm always a bit unclear about the difference between a sketch and a painting. When I looked up the meaning of sketch, it was described as being a quick observation capturing only the essential details of the subject matter, often used to assist in making a more finished picture. The first two paintings I showed you at the beginning of the video, I think you could say that yes, they were sketches. I did use what I'd learned on that to do this one, and because I was recording it, I obviously was taking more care and working more slowly, and it was a bit more considered, so... Um, we can call this either a sketch or a painting, I really don't mind. I think if you work loosely, then the difference between a sketch and a finished painting becomes harder to define. I don't know what you think, you could let me know in the comments below the video. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and got something useful out of it. I'm thinking that maybe trying some flower sketches of your own will help you, like it does me, loosen up with your work and enjoy the process rather than be too concerned or worried about the end result. Bye for now. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss what's coming up next.